Yeah, let's welcome in our morning guest uh, at, uh, at, at at this moment. Gorang Shah is uh, now joining us. We have uh, Lancelot Dikuna with us as well as uh, Amar Singh and Manas Cheswal. Let's start with you, uh, Gorang. What are your top picks today? Well, so Canfin Holmes has been a great performer yesterday and uh, we believe that the HFC segment amongst the NBFC is something that looks very, very exciting in terms of the asset quality also. The GNPL or the NPR are at the lowest levels and uh, there is going to be increased amount of traction in terms of loan disbursement and of course the policy changes that has been happening. Affordable housing infrastructure status is something that we are extremely positive about for the NBFC sector and also the interest rates not uh, did not come down last time around, may stay stagnant for some time but maybe a rate cut possibly at the later part of the year could also trigger some of the positivity. The second one is uh, ICICI approved uh, with the government decision to line up uh, the divestment of the non-life insurance companies or general insurance companies. I think this is one listed entity which could trigger tremendous amount of traction on the upside and post listing I think uh, after being an underperformer has started to perform well. And the third one is from the alternative fuel segment, uh, two picks over there, uh, IGL as well as Petronet LNG, uh, quite excited about these teams as well. All right, um, uh, let's ask Manav. Manav, uh, what are your top picks? See, at the current levels, I like, uh, uh, the, from the IT space, I like Hexaware Technologies. You know, the stock has seen already a decline from its recent peak. And uh, recently, the stock has a very good consolidation. It has formed a very good base around the levels of uh, 195-200. So, uh, since it has already seen a good breakout on the weekly charts, I think the stock is very well poised to see a good rally of at least 15-20% from the current levels. And most importantly, the stock after 6 months, uh, 6 to 7 months has managed to close above its long-term averages with volume. So I think overall it's showing a good structural changes even at the current levels. Uh, it has an important support at 205 on the lower side. So I recommend a buy in this with a stop loss of 200 for an upside target of 225. My second pick would be a buy on Gotrich consumer products. Uh, the stock actually has been in a very good momentum recently and uh, the prices have seen a very sharp reversal from its recent lows of uh, 1550 levels and uh, since the stock has been in a very good uptrend forming a series of high tops and bottoms and the oscillators also on the high time frame charts are still positive. I think in the near term the momentum will be active and the stock has actually seen a good rally with very good volume. So I think going forward the stock is very well poised to see a, a, a two a all time highs of 1700. So a stop loss of 1590 on the low side for an upside target of 1700 at least uh, next few weeks uh, uh, could, could be the ideal strategy at the current levels. All right, uh, Godrej Consumer is the pick that uh, Manav has. Uh, Lancelot, what are your top picks? Well, I have only uh, one company which I can look at at this point in time. Uh, it's Nestle India. Uh, I think they came out with their quarterly results as well as they announced the full year 2016 results which were quite uh, interesting considering that you know the impact of demonetization seems to, you know, hasn't impacted them that much. Uh, I think the worst is over as far as the demonetization, uh, you know, impact is concerned for Nestle. And I also see an increasing shift, you know, from the unorganized players moving to the organized players and that should help Nestle going forward. Plus the impending, uh, you know, implementation of GST will be very positive for Nestle since that would help them, you know, uh, build economies of scale. Uh, we've seen them regain, Nestle has regained uh, almost 60% market share in the noodles market, although it's a bit low compared to its 80% domination earlier, but that is an encouraging sign. Uh, in keeping with their strategy to broad base the uh, revenues as well as, uh, you know, the uh, revenue on profits from a particular product segment, they've introduced 30 new products in uh, the last quarter. And those should start seeing some traction in terms of gaining market share. So while Nestle trades at about 40 times its FY18 earnings, which looks expensive on a you know, on an absolute basis, it's about 25% discount to its five-year um, you know average P, five-year average P, which is actually a good entry point to maybe hold on to the stock and maybe benefit uh, significantly over the next uh, one to two years. Right, uh, you know, uh, Nestle had declared its Q4 numbers uh, 
uh, Lancelot. So if you just look at the numbers, let's just revisit them. 16% higher on the sales front. I'm only talking about the Q4 numbers and not FY16. 2,261 crores is the sales number. The PAT number came in at 231 crores. PAT was slightly lower than estimates, but uh, you know, in terms of margins, the company did well. It was not that bad. Gross margins contracted by 90 basis points. EBITDA on an absolute basis came in at about 418 crores. EBITDA margins came in at about uh, 18.5 versus 18.6 and a further rise uh, is seen in the instant noodle space. Remember last year, November, is when you saw the entire problem of instant uh, noodles, that's Maggie, coming in and that's why the base effect actually uh, su su supported uh, for the market share gains. Domestic sales was affected by demonetization. That's something which the management has said, but overall numbers are decent. There is a little bit of negative surprise, but overall the numbers are looking broadly fine. Another stock that will be in focus will be TCS. Board meet to consider a buyback on Feb 20th. They have a total cash of around 43,000 crores. TCS, of course, generates very strong free cash flows, free cash flows of greater than about 100% every quarter. Last two years, in different format, the company has been giving some money back to the shareholders, but this time around, it seems to be big. Maybe it's peer pressure because Cognizant, along with this results, gave out a very big buyback schemes uh, for, it, uh, for its shareholders, and that's why you know, it could be quite interesting. Just uh, looking at some scenario, 10% buyback would meet 1.5% of their... Uh, uh, market cap, 25% uh, would meet about 4% because their net worth is about uh, 73,000 crores. So that's that's the numbers that we've worked. And of course, other IT companies will also be in focus. Lights of Infosys, HCL, Wipro, all of them have a lot of cash. So all these companies uh, would be in focus. Uh, the first focus will be on SPI and the second will be on uh, uh, TCS and what happens over there. Both these are, of course, uh, expected uh, to react to news flow. That's SBI for you, 8 rupees higher, right from the word go, 275, 276. Tata Motors, 441, that's about 5 rupees higher. Tata Motors, don't forget, was one of the top losers in the last couple of days. Infosys is up around 1.4%. Uh, Tata Steel is uh, flat with a positive bias, a percent higher for Tata Steel. Hindalco, 0.3% higher. Z Entertainment, 516. Axis Bank, flat, about 3 rupees higher. Coal India is up about 0.6%. Adani Ports, 0.15% uh, lower. Uh, BHEL, 30 pesa higher. Axis Bank, about 4 rupees higher. Nifty has opened up 22 points. It's slightly higher than what SGX was indicating. 8738 is what SGX was indicating, but 8751 is where the opening has uh, happened. If I look at some of the other names and what's happening in TCS, what's happening in some of the other SBI subsidiaries. So TCS was up around 2 and a, is up around 2.5%. It's at the day's high, 2,478 for TCS. Some of the other names like Infosys and others have also followed. So Infosys is also doing well. That's SBI for you, 274, 2% higher. ITC is down 2%, no news flow, but it's looking in on the weaker side. That's SBI. Uh, two, two and a half percent high. All the subsidiaries, whenever these news flow comes, you know, tends to react and tends to act. So SBP is up around 6%. State Bank of Mysore is up close to 7%. That's about 39 rupees higher. Uh, State Bank of Bikaner and Jaipur, that's also up around 6.5%. Look at the volumes, 53,000 shares. But that's the only time, you know, when you get news flow regarding this uh, merger, these subsidiaries, that, you know, these banks uh, tend to react. TCS, of course, will react to the buyback meet. Uh, it's up around 2% right now. Uh, 2,460 for TCS. It's 10 to 12 rupees of the day's high, but still looking in uh, decent. Uh, let's look at Nestle as well. That's uh, reacting to numbers. Down about 2.7%, but look at the volumes, 3,000 shares. It's higher than averages, but again, you know, these sort of companies don't tend to react on numbers. They don't tend to see a lot of volume action on the numbers, and maybe that's why uh, it's just about 3,000 shares. Let's also look at Fortis. There is some news flow in the report, uh, in uh, media reports which suggests that, uh, that the TPG deal could be coming in soon and it could lead to a bigger consolidation in the sector. That's up around 1.8%. And Hexaware, where the buyback has started just a few days back, yesterday was up about 8 rupees and today has uh, followed up by about 1.2, 1 percent in terms of gains. Uh, Gammon is uh, reacting to the numbers, but it's a small stock. It's a very small stock when you compare Gammon to some of the others. Losses have reduced and reduced quite uh, uh, meaningfully. So maybe that's why uh, that's reacting the way it is. That's Gammon uh, for you, down about uh, 4 Four and a half odd, uh, up about four, four and a half odd percent. Bajaj Electrical absolutely flat. They have changed their guidance, but I don't really think that uh, the street is focusing in too much on that. Anisha, any other names that you can pick up? Uh, Pankaj, you had mentioned the uh, uh, SPI subsidiaries. All of them are buzzing, and they're the ones uh, that are gaining on the. Um, uh, they are on the upside and um, in the broader markets, these are the stocks doing well. Then we have uh, uh, Gammon Infra, which is up 3%. Gammon India is up 5%. Uh, Jay Prakash Associates up 2.5% and Fortis is up 2%. Uh, 
uh, just style today is up two percent we have reliance defense up two percent uh, so these are the stocks gaining on more than reasonable uh, usual volumes itc is seeing a two percent cut now and volumes are also high here uh, we have some profit taking coming in in orb in the farm up just down one percent or thereabouts um our uh, what are your top picks for the day today the nifty is uh, trading up now uh, with gains of about uh, 20 points or so uh, what are your top picks yeah very good morning uh, the Overall, Nifty, uh, as we've seen, uh, it's uh, open positive. As far as my topics are concerned, the first is escorts. We've seen a sharp uh, rally in escorts. So, escort is definitely, uh, technically speaking, very strong on the chart. So, it can be a buy uh, around uh, 404 levels uh, with a stop loss of uh, 397 and a target of 419. So, uh, that's one. Okay, um, so we got escorts as uh, Amar's top pick. Now on the Nifty, we're seeing emphasis is up 2%. It's nearly now in uh, um, triple, it is in triple digits and, uh, uh, you know, it's nearly at a 1,000 rupees a share. Uh, so the IT uh, pack has moved up well. Uh, what would you make of this kind of move? Uh, uh, okay, I think Amar is back. Amar, uh, would you please complete your picks? Uh, you said you like escorts. Do you have any other, um, any more picks? Yeah, the second is uh, Ashok Leland. Ashok Leland, overall, technically speaking, it's uh, it's strong on the short term and intermediate uh, trend. So, uh, however, on the upside, it's capped around 96 levels. So, it can be a buy at 92.50 with a stop loss of uh, 91.25 and a target of uh, 94.70. All right. Uh, Lancelot, uh, would you now look at uh, some of the IT stocks uh, more favorably? Do you think, uh, you know, they have... Uh, repeatedly gone lower and now seem to have done some bottom building. Do you think uh, the outlook for IT stocks could improve from here on? Uh, you know, one of the analysts uh, a day earlier said that if they do deploy their free cash uh, to reward uh, shareholders, I would look at buying them, be it by dividends or buybacks. And now we're hearing something from TCS on a buyback. Um, would you consider IT stocks now? Well, definitely, yes. I think, you know, IT has uh, has been one of the sectors that has corrected significantly from its uh, peaks. And I think uh, all the negatives seem to have been already priced in. Uh, as TCS has announced a buyback, you know, a lot of them are having this issue about holding significantly large amount of cash and how to deploy that profitably. So maybe one of the avenues that was suggested was if they buy back, then some of the cash goes back to shareholders and as well as then improves the, uh, you know, the overall uh, capitalization of the uh, companies themselves. So on a valuation perspective, most of these are trading at their, you know, all time lows and they've sort of just found a base or formed a bottom in that sense that we have not, we are not seeing continued falling, um, you know, of continued fall. And I do believe that uh, though there may be some, let's say, surprises in terms of the H-1B visas and some impact which is yet to unfold over the next 12 months as to how these companies will uh, address the visa issues, uh, those seem to have already got priced in and, and probably now it should be a time to start accumulating if there's any further decline that would give you a, another opportunity to buy. But yes, these look to be attractive because Many of them, even from a dividend yield perspective, would start, you know, giving you two to three percent dividend yield, which is uh, reasonably good considering that growth will pick up once they change their business model and go more towards an automation or a digitization services model, which will be able to generate uh, profits back again. Gorang, how would you look at uh, Tata Motors? Uh, last two days down, down quite significantly. Today, trying to retrace, but uh, still, uh, you would uh, wait for the Q4 numbers. So, when I was uh, to the studio this morning uh, for the show, I was in a con call with our branches, Pan India. We maintained our positive bias even when the China slowdown happened. We were positive when the Brexit happened. We are positive post the numbers that we have seen, which of course has led to a lot of downgrades and a lot of concerns and a lot of negative, uh, you know, views on the counter. Uh, if you ask me, Pankaj, your downside from here is close to about 5 to 10 percent in the worst case scenario. And uh, your upside could be somewhere close to about 540 to 580. This could take maybe about a year, year and a half plus. 
but with the new launches both on the domestic business with the scrappage policy with the defense for it and with the expectation that uh, recovery in terms of global sales numbers for JLR on fallback of affordable models getting launched is going to throw in too much amount great amount of uh, positivities uh, I would say that maybe in the immediate short to medium term any recovery would be faced with selling pressure because people would want to exit for all those people who would have bought in from a short to medium term point of view but like I mentioned from maybe 330, 340, I beg your pardon, 430, 440 odd levels, your downside is extremely protected. Right, so maybe another 2-3% and you would be a buyer? I would start buying at current levels also. Okay, course. even currently it, it would it would qualify Absolutely. as a buyer? Absolutely. Right, just a word on uh, TCS as well, Gora, the buyback uh, announcement that they have given. Absolutely in line with estimates, but still uh, the street would reward for that buyback? Yeah, so I think uh, expectation is growing because in terms of performance and numbers, they have not done anything. So to get back the sentiments on the positive side and reinforce some amount of confidence which has got shaken up, uh, TCS uh, has possibly come out with this announcement and 20th, 20 Feb, I believe is the date when the meeting is there uh, to finalize the uh, deal of buyback. You also heard something similar on from Infosys. So, you know, these are all short to medium term upticks, uh, Pankaj. But if you talk on the fundamentals, long term earning usability, well, we are extremely positive on the entire IT pack, starting with TCS, Infosys, HCL Tech, Tech, Mahindra, NIT Technologies, InfoEdge, uh, Mindtree, if you will, are under our positive coverage. Right, uh, all of these are under positive coverage for Gorong. Amar, uh, what would be your uh, view on IT pack? Any levels to watch on Infosys, TCS? Okay. Okay. I think I think uh, we have uh, some technical issue with that. Uh, Manav, if you could tell us about levels on uh, Infosys and TCS. Surely, see, uh, Infosys has actually seen a very good breakout after forming a double bottom pattern, and uh, the stock has managed to close decisively above uh, 990 levels, and it has been trading above it since last couple of trading sessions. Uh, most importantly. Uh, Infosys has definitely formed a very good base and I think it has bottomed out for next couple of months or even quarter at least. Uh, I don't see the stock uh, actually going below 980 levels on the immediate basis. So uh, even at the current levels, there is a limited downside. But uh, eventually, I think the upside target that uh, the pattern formation indicates is close to the levels of 1,080 to sub-1,100 levels. So, so uh, uh, looking at the overall retracement uh, that the stock has declined, so 1,100 would be the minimum targets that we are looking for. Infosys, in fact, on the other hand, uh, shows a very good strong momentum, at least on the short-term perspective. The stock has seen a very good close above the 2420 levels, which was its previous resistance. And now the stock is, uh, stock is inching higher uh, since it has closed above its important long-term averages. So, seeing a good monthly breakout on TCS and definitely if the stock holds on to 2400 levels, I think in the near-term perspective, we could see a very good rally close to the levels of 25, uh, 20 to 2550 levels. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on NDTV Profit and giving us uh, your top picks and views on all the stocks that you discussed. Let's take your disclosures. Gorank, your disclosures. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, no personal investments in any of the stocks that we have discussed, but uh, the recos have gone across to our clients. Lancelot, your disclosures. Uh, I don't have any uh, holding in the in the company dis, uh, which we discussed, uh, but my clients would definitely have uh, holding in, in the companies. Amar, your disclosures. Uh, I personally don't hold any positions in the stocks that I've recommended. And Manak, your disclosures. I don't have any, uh, uh, in, in the stocks that we've discussed, I don't have any personal uh, investments, but we the same to our clients. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on NDTV Profit today.